Hey there, I'm Nev, I'm a dev, and today I want to talk about something that has been, I think, on my mind for quite a while now, and it is a database provider called Neon. And I'm going to show to you what Neon is today, and I'm going to show you how to like set it up with SvelteKit and show you a pretty basic example, I guess. So yeah, we have uh, the Neon website right here. Um, they got a pretty fancy landing page, which I really like. Um, I mean, God, I'm jealous of, about these animations. These are really cool. Um, but yeah, I think the main feature that I really love about Neon is branching. And branching, you can imagine branching like kind of in GitHub, where you also have the ability to branch your code. Um, in Neon, you just kind of branch your database data. And they also have scaling, which is basically that the database scales automatically um, according to the load which the database is experiencing currently um, and yeah I think um, let's let's show it to you like as you can see we have some projects running neon I have codoodle I have zenith I have uh, my YouTube dashboard app that I'm building right now and we have the um, analytics uh, my analytics running on it and I gotta say dude um, neon neon rocks like I really like neon uh, how it works it's just super convenient and um, you can just create a project like this and what's also really awesome is that in their billing in their free tier you can now create 10 projects instead of just one project which you could do like until two months ago or something like that um, that was really cool to hear that I am now able to create multiple uh, projects um because before i just had like one um one project and i would create multiple database in here but like with a bit of a hassle as to say the least yeah so let's create a new project and let's call it neon video uh, we can select the postgres version um select where we want to host it i don't even care really um and yeah we now have a database as simple as that and we can copy it and we can even inspect the tables and stuff. It's really awesome. This is using Drizzle Studio, I think. Let's go ahead and create a new project. So we're gonna go ahead into and we're gonna have we're gonna go with a uh, minimal TypeScript, uh prettier is lint and wait, do we need this? Yeah, I guess. Um we're gonna go with Lucia and we don't need Tailwind. Uh, we're gonna go with Postgres because Neon is based on Postgres. And we're gonna choose Neon here and PNPM to install our things. Yep. So let's do a code Neon vid. And we have our project now started up in our VS Code. And if we now go ahead and do dev, we have this basic page right here, which does nothing yet. Uh, let's go ahead and create an ENV and we have our ENV in our uh, keyboard and uh, our clipboard so we're just gonna paste it in here by the way don't worry I will uh, delete the database after so there's no like use to <laughs> steal my credentials um, and yeah I think now we're pretty much uh, up and running because now in our index everything is already set up and in our scheme as well and if we now go ahead and do um p exec drizzle kit no actually let's go ahead into uh extra json and we're gonna go ahead and delete some lines here and do generate here generate here as well and now p generate um yeah pdb generate and as you can see now uh, the drizzle thing like made a, a little migration file right here and then pdb push which will push our changes instantly to the database and we want to execute all the statements and now if we go into our console uh, let's go into our table and we have user here so yeah, we now have our little uh, database here with our schema, uh, which just contains a user. Um, but if we, okay, wait, we need to, of course, start our dev server again. 
Um, of course, we don't see anything yet. So let's go into our SRC and our Tor routes and create a page.server.es and let's do SR accounts load is um, page server load. Um, auto import that and this is an async function and uh, yeah we can just do await db um, dot query dot uh, wait what is oh yeah we need to import the schema in here um, in here um, then schema is uh, just schema because we actually have an import um, everything as schema from schema and now we have the schema and we should have this one perfect dot find many and I think this is already it we can just return that and in here we can go ahead and do a script tag uh, set the lang to ts so that we get TypeScript support and then we go ahead and do let uh, we're gonna define our props and in our props we have just I guess the DB or not let data I guess yeah data um, and then our users so let our const users is data dot users no it's just data whoops okay so and here we can do users list and we have an unnumbered list and a list item oh uh, no wait <laughs> i don't have a list item we have an unnumbered list and then we we'll go ahead and do that each statement each users as user and in here we have a list item and in this list item we're just going to do an user .h. um but right now because we don't have anything in here now we're getting our patient server return array i must return a plain object at the top level um okay let's just do this Oh, we can do this. Um, then we're just going to do const users is the weight db. And then we're going to return users. And now we still got no way now. We need to go ahead and do data.users. And now everything works. But we, of course, don't see anything in our database yet because we haven't populated it. Um, so let's go ahead and do age. And now refresh, we see this. Um, yeah, now let me show you something really cool. We can now go ahead into our branches and create a new branch. And we're gonna go ahead and call this dev and create it. Copy the little command, uh, not the command, the URL. We are gonna paste this in here. And now, I guess we still have our same data. But we can now make changes to our schema. And if we now want to go ahead and do username, username is a text, username um, dot not null. Now we'll probably receive an error. Yeah, because we don't have this column. So uh, what we're going to do is to pgenerate and pdb generate. Whoops my bad and it will create a new migration file and we're gonna do pdb push which will of course create our um, migration yeah let's truncate the table um, and start the development server again uh, now we will have nothing because we truncated the table um, but if we refresh here you can see we now have this and if we go ahead and do h24 and then nev, I'm of course not 24, so I should do 17 in here. We have h17 right here. And we can go ahead and do uh, user dot uh, username. And then we have this thing. And then we can also do 24 
from and we have our other users and now we can if you want to push to production we can just simply change the url back to the old one and do pdb push uh, like that and it will push our data to our database uh, we're gonna do a yes we want to truncate our database and if we now go ahead into dev we of course won't have anything in here because we don't have any fields in here um but yeah we can now theoretically go ahead and change uh, and delete our dev branch um my recommendation for my workflow is that i always create a branch for every feature that i implement and then after i implemented the feature i will delete my branch again because the way drizzle like works is it goes through all these um all these migration files and then it compares the schema to um the the already online the already pushed version of our database and then it looks just like applies the migration to whatever um, is missing and yeah that's basically how these migrations work yeah I hope I could give you a really good insight into how to streamline your database uh, with neon and small kid I know this was a little bit of a uh, short um, kind of video but I hope you liked it anyways um, uh, like and subscribe to the channel uh, would help me out a lot. Maybe we'll reach even the 1,000 subscribers like in this year even or in January. I don't know. Um, yeah, and we will see us in the next video. Bye.